Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be starting our playthroughs of the West Kingdom Trilogy. This includes Architects of the West Kingdom, Paladins of the West Kingdom, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Um, be playing through all of the games, and at the end I'm going to give you my opinion on which one I feel is the best. But um, I feel like these are all uh, excellent games in their own right. Um, and so they all have merit and architects is probably the easiest one uh, the most straightforward uh, it's essentially a worker placement game uh, so let's get into um, actually let's get into the setup first again this is a uh, game has been set up for a solo game setup is actually pretty easy in this game you obviously want to have all of your resources and a supply off to the side and then you are going to choose your player board and your meeple colors and then you're going to choose the there's a black board for the solo ai if you're playing against the solo ai and then you can just give them any color i just gave them one that that stands out um, for me specifically i have chosen the flip side of my player board which adds some variable player powers it just kind of mixes things up helps keep things fresh um, if you play on the other side where it's actually red in the background Everybody is the same. They all start with three silver, seven virtue, uh, and that no resources. Whereas um, my guy here is giving me an extra silver, um, so four silver, seven virtue, and a stone. <clears throat> all right. Um, so you're going to take your player board. You're going to take your twenty meeples. You actually get to start the game with all of these meeples. You you know this is kind of a reverse of how most worker placements go where you have to acquire more workers and kind of build up your um your army per se here you actually start with 20 and that's all you get for the rest of the game you're actually going to lose some throughout the game to permanent spots the only other things you really need to do during setup is uh shuffle up the um what are these people call the apprentice cards here and then deal out eight into each one of these slots and put the draw pile off to the side you're also going to shuffle up the building cards here and place them in a face down stack here you're going to shuffle up the black market cards these are double sided the other side looks like this and you want to stick them all with the kind of smaller cart side face up on this side and as we uh, advance the black market we're just going to flip them over onto this side you're going to put four coins in the tax stand um, no matter what the player count is, you put sh everybody puts the one marker here at seven virtue and one marker here under the cathedral track. Last thing you're going to need to do is take a number of these reward scrolls, uh, shuffle them up, and deal two per player plus one. So in a two player game, because we're playing solo but we're playing against the bot, we have five cards here two for him, two for me, one extra. I could get all five. Uh, it's doubtful that that will happen, um, but you know that's how. If you notice, this track pinches off and gets smaller and smaller, so only one person can acquire that top spot. Um, so that's kind of why they do it that way. Last but not least, you're going to have a pile of uh, debt cards over here. There's some multiplier resource multiplier cards. Um, all that stuff can just be set off to the side. In a multiplayer game, you would draw four cards and you would go around and do a draft of the building cards. You you know, you would take one, pass the rest down, you'd take the three that were passed to you, you choose one, pass two down, so on and so forth. In a solo game, you're gonna draw five and claim three. So these are the three I claimed. Um, I'm not gonna go over what they all mean, but you can see here that the resource cost to build them as over here on the left the victory points that I will gain at the end of the game from having built them are right here and then these uh, the brown banners along the bottom are either going to be instant effects with the lightning bolt or end game scoring with the flags so these mean various things but essentially this is architects of the West Kingdom you're gonna have to build buildings to advance in the game but we're also going to try and um, earn spots to build the cathedral. That's kind of the main focus of the game is getting your influence in and building portions of the cathedral. 
this is a 20 point VP station. This is the highest uh, single point of VP you can get. So that's really should be your focus of the game. All right. Uh, the only other thing that you need to do during solo setup that is different from regular setup is that you're going to take the uh, set of the um, scheme cards here and you're going to you're going to pull out all the ones with the brown banner and shuffle them up and you're going to take all the ones with the gray banner here and shuffle them up and put them off to the side the gray banner ones are going to be added in at specific times um, and you'll see when that happens but this is each one of these cards is going to give the AI a specific direction of action to take on its turn. Um, also, the game instructs you to go in and remove the re four resource market cards. I've just placed them at the bottom here. Stone market, clay market, silver market, and wood market. In case you were curious as to what those are, I guess the designers felt like those cards were too powerful for an individual to have against the solo because the solo bot does not claim any cards they don't build any buildings the only resource they collect is marble um, otherwise they're pretty much just messing with you and I'll, I'll show you how obviously when we get into our playthrough but let's get into how to play the game so we've set up the game like I said it's very simple you kind of take your meeples you put out the resources and you set out the cards that's it um, this is a worker placement game, but it's also referred to as a worker investment game. That means that um, most of these areas with the big open circle means that you can send multiple workers there. So on one turn, you get to place one of your workers in any location that is viable. So say I go here on my first turn, the forest is gonna give me one wood per worker. So I would get one wood from the supply. Say on my next turn, I go here. I now have invested two workers at this location. I've left this guy here. I am actually going to get two wood. And say I just, if I were to continue to go here turn after turn, I would then get three wood and then four wood. And you can see how I'm investing workers in this location. So I'm getting more and more wood each time I go there. Same thing with the quarry. The silversmith is one coin plus an additional one per worker. So think of it as like one coin per worker plus a bonus. The mines up here is similar to the silversmith. You get one brick per worker plus a bonus brick. Or if you have at least two workers there, you can get one gold. You cannot, however, if you have three workers, you cannot say, all right, I'm going to spend these two guys to get two gold and this person to get uh, what would be two brick. Uh, you either have to do brick or gold, um, but you have to have at least two workers to get gold. So those are the kind of four main resource spots on your board. And again, the more uh, meeples of your color you have there, the more resources you're going to gain for going there. Other players' meeples can be there, and it does not affect you at all. The, re the, the circle is open, it's large, as many workers can be there as you want. So let's talk about some of these other areas of the board. You can go to the workshop here, and you can see that you get, uh, there's two things you can do. You can either acquire an apprentice, or you can acquire some building cards. To acquire an apprentice, you need to pay four uh, silver and then um, you're able to hire the apprentice now you'll notice that these top two silver have an orangish hue to them that means they are going to be paid to the tax stand the bottom two are going to be paid to the supply um, a lot of this iconography you will see throughout all of the West Kingdom games so pay attention because you're gonna see this multicolored silver again um, now, the trick is, is that if I only have one worker here, the only apprentices I have available to hire are in this first row here on the left. If I have sent two workers, I can choose from here or here. Three workers, I can choose from any one of these first three rows. And four workers, I have 
everybody I can see is available to me. Now, there is a way to get around that. Say I only have one worker and I really want this debt collector here. And say, for example, I have paid my four silver already. I can place a silver on the trader to skip him and now move on. Think of it as the workers that you have have to reach down the line. But if you skip one with a silver, your single worker can reach to that second row. So I could even pay two silver here to get all the way to the patron. The silver stays put um, and if somebody collects that person in the future, they gain that silver. Now, the AI bot doesn't ever gain silver, so it doesn't matter to him. But uh, if you were, happen to be playing multiplayer, that would come into play. Anytime you purchase someone, you pick them up and everybody slides down to the left and you draw a new card to fill in on these far right spots. The other option you can do at the workshop is to gain a building card you just draw the top card or you can see if you have at least two workers here you would get two cards or four workers here you're going to get three cards um, again you're just drawing them from the top of the deck the king's storehouse is a way to kind of trade in basic goods for either virtue or marble marble is um, you know probably the most sought after resource in the game and is necessary to reach certain levels of the cathedral. You don't need a lot of it, but um, you are gonna need it at some point. So you can see here, you can send a worker here and kind of do a trade of two of these resources to go up on the virtue track or three of wood or stone to gain a marble. The more workers I have here, remember this is a worker investment game, the more actions I can take. So if I have three workers here, I can actually move my virtue up three times as long as I have two, four, six resources to spend. Another place you can go to is the tax stand. The tax stand is actually going to allow you to steal all of the money that's in this box right here. So any money that has been paid to the tax, you can steal, but you can see you're gonna have to lose two virtue to do so but it's a cheap and easy way to get a lot of money. You can also go to the black market. Now you'll notice that the black market, these circles are much smaller because only one worker can go to each of these slots at a time. If you go to one of these slots, you need to pay the coins up above it and you're gonna lose one virtue no matter where you go because you're going to the black market, it's shady dealings. If you go to this one, you're gonna gain these two resources. You don't flip the card or anything, it stays right there, and this person is locked right there until there is a black market reset, which we'll talk about in a second. If you go here, you're, you can see you're getting more resources, and as we flip these cards over, there's always gonna be more resources on the opposite side. The other place you can do is go to the middle here. You can pay two coins to actually gain any apprentice you want, that's this blue with a plus sign, or you can draw five building cards and keep one. Obviously that's a lot cheaper than going to the workshop, but you're losing virtue in doing so. And any people who are in the black market are gonna end up in jail. It's just an inevitable. So we're gonna talk more about black market reset here in just a second. Um, you can also, Another place you can send your worker is the guild hall. That's these spots up here. And this location here, you're actually going to lay your meeple down, fill in one of these slots, and it's locked there. It cannot be removed for any reason. It stays put there the rest of the game. But the guild hall allows you to either build a card out of your hand. So in this instance, I would have to pay the resources listed here, and then I can place this card down, gaining its benefit, and eventually its end game scoring. Or, I can do work on the cathedral. Remember, the cathedral is kind of the focus of the game here. Um, so in doing so, you would have to pay whatever uh, is on this level here. So this first level here, I have to pay one gold and discard one building card. Whereas all the way up here, I'd have to discard two gold, two marble, and one building card. Uh, 
if you build in the cathedral and move up, you get to draw a reward card from the stack here. You gain whatever's on the reward card. If there are no reward cards left, you simply get to move up one virtue for building in the cathedral. You will also notice that there are some additional spaces here with a 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 plus. These spaces are ignored in a solo game because we're only playing with two players. So in a two player game, we're gonna fill one, two, three, and then we'll go down here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So after 12 buildings are built, or you know that includes spending time at the cathedral, the game is over. That's the end game condition is filling this last one in. If you were playing a five person game, it would be filling in all of these, but there's a lot more players. You will also notice that there are these two symbols here. So anytime you someone goes to the guild hall and fills in that spot, that is the symbol for a black market reset, which again, I'm gonna talk about in just a second. So some of you are probably wondering at this point, well, I keep sending my workers out here, you know, and say I want wood and some silver and I've sent some to the quarry, and I've hired some people, and I've gone to the tax stand twice in the black market, and King's Warehouse, and one here, and now all of a sudden I'm out of workers. There's no, how do you bring them back? Well, worker investment game um, has this one mechanism to it that is going to have the other players keeping you from investing too heavily in a certain location, getting too greedy, and that is the town center. The town center uh, is a way for you to go around and gather up workers and capture them. Um, almost like Sheriff of Nottingham, I, I've never really been able to wrap my head around like what this represents because you're supposed to be architects, but anyways. If you send a worker to the town center, you can pay one, you have to pay one silver. Again, the first one goes to the tax stand. And the red banner around people means that you can rope up any, all of the workers in one area. So say the AI had a bunch of people here in the King's storehouse. I could go here, pay my one coin, and I would take all of these guys and put them onto my mat in this captured area right here. Then, on a later turn, I can go to the guardhouse, which is the only other location I haven't talked about. The guardhouse is also has the prison. And at the guardhouse, there are several options you can do. And again, the more workers I have sent here, the more actions I can take. The first one being to imprison all of one color worker, and I get a silver per worker I've turned in. So in this instance, I would gain four silver. I can also though, if I'm the yellow worker, I can go here and get my workers back. I don't have to pay anything. I have gone and convinced the guards they did nothing wrong and I get them back. So this is the main mechanism for how you are getting your people back onto your board to be able to use them again, because you're gonna put them out there and invest them in certain areas Eventually, you're gonna run out of workers. There's more than 20 turns in the game. But people inevitably, especially the AI, are gonna gather up your workers, they're gonna sell them to the prison, and you're gonna go get them out of the prison. Your other options here at the guard house are to pay five coins, two to the tax, to pull back workers out of this captured area. And if you were playing multiplayer, you could actually pull back all your workers off of everyone's captured area. Um, if you don't have five coins and you want to be able to do this, you can take a debt card and lose a virtue to do so. And the last thing you can do at the guardhouse is pay off your debts. You can pay six silver, three of which going to the tax, to if you have acquired a debt, which you can see is minus two VP at the end of the game, you flip it over, it's going to give you one instant virtue, and that's it. Um, all right, so that is, you know, sending people to the town center here and um, eventually sending them to prison and getting them out of prison is how you're gonna get your workers back um, onto your player mat. If you have more than one worker here um, in the solo game, you can pay additional coins to 
pull off yellow people from more than one location. In a multiplayer game, paying the additional coins means I could pull all of yellow or and then all of blue from the same location. But in a two-player game or a solo game, you can actually go to different locations because obviously there's only ever one other person's color that you would want to steal. However, you can go to the town center to pull back your workers your own workers now obviously you don't capture them they just come straight back to your mat but say you've invested a ton in the quarry and the solo AI is not helping you out you could actually send someone here to pull all your workers back from one location the last thing that I need to talk about here is the black market reset so anytime that all three of these locations are full or somebody enters the guild hall in these two locations here, a black market reset happens. That means that everybody who is at the black market, so say it looked like this, goes to prison instantly. Nobody gets paid for it, they just go to prison. You're also gonna flip over this next card, which resets the black market in a way. You've cleared these spaces out so people can come back and visit them. But now you have to deal with, um, you know, your people in prison. If you have at least three people in prison, which say the solo AI was the only one going to the black market, he would, you lose a virtue. And whoever has the most people in prison, so say we were back like this, which it's still the yellow, is gonna gain a debt. If we were tied like this, we would each gain a debt. So uh, there is, incentive to go to the black market it's cheaper uh, if you don't mind losing virtue but eventually those people are going to go to jail and you are going to have to deal with them um, th there's going to be some negative consequences so i think i have covered everything uh, that there is in understanding how to play the game so let's go ahead and play through a couple rounds and we'll stop the video there and then we'll pick back up with the rest of this playthrough in an extended playthrough video which you can watch immediately after this but i don't want this video to get too long so let's go ahead and get started um as a, in a solo game i always get to go first so i need to think about what i want to do here um I like the Acolyte here because he's going to give me a bump up in Virtue. He's also going to give me two silver every time I build on the Cathedral, which is definitely something I want to do. Um, the Squire's not bad out here. If I can stay clean, he's going to give me a lot of marble. I basically need to stay away from the Black Market and keep my people out of prison. That's, for the most part, pretty easy. Um, the Conspirator is nice because then I don't have to pay my silver to wrangle people up. Uh, but again, these people are way at the end, so it's going to take some investment to get there. Um, so I don't think I'm quite ready to um, take an apprentice yet. One thing I did not mention is that along with needing to spend the resources here on the left, say, for example, to build the drafting room, I also have to have a... Uh, worker with the axe symbol and a worker with the paintbrush symbol in my um, uh, tableau here. So you can see trader has the paintbrush symbol and the conspirator has the axe symbol. The laborer who doesn't get you anything actually gets you all of the symbols just himself. So that's why he doesn't have anything else going on for him. All right. Um, enough chit chatting. Let's see, where do I want to go? Um, I need some gold. So I guess let's start investing up here. So I go to the mines. I'm going to get one brick plus one per worker. So two brick. There we go. All right. So that's it. Very quick and easy turn. Now the AI is going to go. So we're going to flip over the top card of the scheme deck. It's going to tell me where I'm placing his worker, which is the king's storehouse. Then he's going to gain one virtue per worker at the king's storehouse. So he bumps up right there. So the more and more people I allow him to collect there, the more and more virtue he's going to go every time he sends someone to the king's storehouse. But you can see that's it. He's done. Very simple. Um, this game moves very quickly. So. 
uh, back to me, I am going to go ahead before he wrangles anybody up and get me some gold. All right. Okay, so he's going to the black market. Um, he essentially wants to always go to the left or the right spot, working back to the left, whatever is open. So he's going to go here. Remember, he doesn't deal in, in silver, but in doing so, he's going to lose one virtue and he's going to gain two marble, which is the only resource he collects. And this is essentially one point of victory, uh, one VP for him at the end of the game, all of this stuff he collects. But that's it. He's done. He's now, he is blocking this space for me. It's really one of the few that he can block for me, are the black market spaces. All right, I'm going to continue to ride this train before he kicks me out of here. I'm hoping to go, be able to go up here one more time. So I'm actually going to get four brick now for going there because it's three brick for three workers and um, then the one extra. All right, so see, I didn't quite make it because he is going to go to the town center and his instructions are to pay one from the supply. All his money always comes from the supply, puts it into the tax stand. And he wants to capture all your workers from the location with the most. Well, I only have one group of workers out there. If there's a tie, they give me a, a order of locations from top to bottom to follow. But say la vie, he has wrangled up my three workers up there. So I'm not able to get um, the next thing of gold I need, which is unfortunate. So I think what I'm going to do, I did get one gold. So I'm going to go ahead and start this party off and I'm going to go to the guild hall. Now I need to spend one gold there and I need to discard one card. I'm going to go ahead and Yeah, discard the aqueducts here and go at the bottom. I'm not going to go through this entire deck. Um, and now I get to push up here. Remember when you build in the cathedral, you get one, you get the top resource card. And you can see I'm going up on the virtue track and to wood. So that's not bad. Doing pretty good on resources here. And that one is just done out of the game. All right, what's the AI doing? King's Storehouse, again, he is going here. Now he has two people, so he's actually gonna go up here twice, one, two. All right, back to me. So I have a whole bunch of brick now. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Do I wanna go there? Now see, I did not have my Acolyte before I took my Cathedral action. So I think what I'm going to do here is go ahead and go to the Black Market before I get too far up the Virtue Track. Because if you notice, when you get up to this spot on the Virtue Track, you can no longer go to the Black Market. Whereas if you make it down the virtue track, you can no longer work in the cathedral. And you can see you also start getting a discount on things like going to the town center or the workshop. So it kind of pays to be bad, but at the end of the game, it's gonna be negative VP big time. So, but I'm going here, so I'm going to lose the one VP I gained. I have to pay to supply. They're not orangish, so they go back to the supply. But now I get to claim any um, person I want. So I'm going to claim this acolyte. It's going to instantly give me my virtue back. And now anytime I do the cathedral action, I will be able to gain two silver as well. So these are all going to slide down. And we now have a swindler. Okay. All right. So what's the AI doing? 
he is going to the workshop so he puts a person there he's gonna put two gold in or two silver into the tax stand because they're kind of orangish now he is going to take the trader out of the game and then after we slide all these down it says if possible add one future scheme card per worker to the schemes discard pile so he's only got one worker here this card is being added to the discard pile all right so what do we want to do now um i guess i need some more wood to go that route okay so let's go here give me some wood again remember it's worker investment so it feels kind of slow going there the first time but hopefully i can get some more and more people there all right where is he going guard house okay so he is going to send one person to the guard house now he's going to take as many actions as possible one per worker starting at the top working his way down first action he would want to do is claim all his workers back he doesn't have any next he's going to imprison all of my workers and get one marble for doing so. All right, and that's it. Because he only has one worker up there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna come back up here to the forest. And so now I get two wood. Okay. Let me figure out how to get some gold. Okay. He is going to go to the tax stand, which simply means he loses two virtue, one, two. He removes all of this from the game. Again, he doesn't gain it, he just disappears. But he is going to gain one marble, because this is like the only resource he collects. All right. Um... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep riding this train until I get kicked off, I feel like. Okay. All right, so there you go. See, he knew that I was getting too greedy. So he's gonna pay one silver to the tax stand. He's going after the most, so he captures these people here. All right. Um, So let's go up here. Oh, so I'm gonna get two brick. What's he doing? He's going to the king's storehouse. All right, see, and this is getting a little, one, two, three, it's getting a little built up right here. So I may wanna scoop those players up, but before I do that, I'm gonna go up here and get me at least one gold. Let's see what he's doing again. He's going back to the tax stand, which not nearly as lucrative for him but I guess he's still getting a marble either way so he now has five marble um, and this comes back down and I think yep I want to go ahead and come up here get my second gold that I need Yep, yep. Okay. And he gets a turn. He's going to the King's Storehouse. All right. Enough is enough. So, one, two, three, four. Um, yeah. All right. So, it's time for me to gather some of these people up. I'm going to pay one to the tax stand and take all these people here. Okay. I'm wanting him to send my people to jail so I can get them out but okay maybe I should not wait for that all right he's gonna take all of these people he pays one to the tax and I am gonna go up here and turn in his people for four silver one, two, three, four. okay what's he doing now he is going to the guild hall he's finally joining the battle all right, 
And when he goes to the guild hall, he only deals in the cathedral. So he's going to push up there. He's going to gain a single virtue for that. And he gains his one resource as usual. And he's just going to discard that. I'm not even going to look to see what he stole from me. Okay. So what do we want to do here now? I do need some marble. Got a lot of brick stored up. But I also want to get this building out there, so. All right, I'm gonna come up here and to the guild hall, I'm gonna take a building action instead. So I'm gonna build this building here, which means I have to spend my two wood and two gold. It's going to give me four VP at the end of the game, and also two additional VP as long as I'm highest on the Cathedral track, which I am planning on doing. All right, he's going to the workshop here. He is putting two into the tax, and he's taking this guy. here to the guild hall I am now gonna push up into here I have four wood to spend I have a card to discard that will gain this card which is just to boom, boom. all right so now I am no longer available to go to the black market the AI does not have to follow those rules by the way, ooh, and I'm getting two silver because I took a cathedral action from my acolyte. Perfect, that is exactly what I needed. Okay, what's the AI doing here? He is going to the town center. He is gathering up more of my people. Ugh. All right, so he is paying one. To the tax sorry that's not the tax and he okay so there he cannot take this person so he's actually taking my person from the guard house which stinks because I actually needed that guy there so I'm a little concerned about a black market reset here very soon I don't want to lose the virtue that I've worked hard to acquire so I'm actually gonna go up here and spend my one worker to bring these guys back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he is going to the guard house. This is going to be his second worker, so he can do two things. The first thing being, he's going to get all of these people back, and then he's gonna put all of my workers in there. So that's not very nice, is it, sir? So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna scoop up all of you guys, having had to pay one to do so. All right, what is he doing? He is going to the town center, of course you are. He's paying one to the supply and he's actually stealing these guys from the town center. Oops, those guys don't belong in there. All right, um, so I'm gonna go back up here before I get in trouble here. Oh, come here. So I get all of these people back. It's my second worker and then I can trade these people in for more silver. All right. And he is going to the guard house, of course. So he's gonna get these people back. He's going to put these two people in jail. And um, since he's got three people there, he can come down this line, but the other two um, things are not even viable for him, so he skips over them. 
<sighs> all right. All right. Um, what do we want to do here? I know that there is a black market card left in his deck, just having played this enough. So I could gain some benefit if I just go up here, I think, yeah. It's really not helping, but I don't want anybody in jail. Yeah. All right, he's going to the guild hall. So he's going up here. He gets to gain a virtue. He gets to gain a marble. And he discards this card and moves up here. All right. So uh, if my math is correct, if I go here and I will pay my two gold to the tax and my two gold to the supply and my one gold right here, and I gain this squire, which will give me one virtue. This should be, there's only one card left in their deck. And it is. It is the black market card. So he's gonna go there. He's going to lose a virtue, um, but gain a marble. But that also fires off a black market reset. So yeah, I just happen to know that he always has two of these in there. Um, so I knew we were getting down to it. So all of these guys go. This gets flipped over. And now we need to deal with this stuff. Do any of us have three? No, but he has the most. So he now has to take a deck card. And since I hired my squire in time, which I forgot to move this down, um, I get a marble. Oh, no, wait, I don't get a marble because I have one person in jail. Darn it. All right. No more black market actions for me because I need that marble for end game scoring. Okay. So at this point, you guys have seen um, a full playthrough of the uh, solo AI scheme deck here. At this point, we're going to just shuffle up all of Constantine's cards. Remember, we added one uh, future scheme card in to the deck, which is going to make him a little bit tougher. Um, but otherwise, we just continue to play this out as expected. We're just about halfway through the game. So I think this is a good place to stop the video now. And um, I am going to come back here in just a second. I'm going to jump forward in time. And we're going to take the score uh, of the game so that you guys can get the full picture of the game, how the game sets up, how to play the game how it actually plays, and then how to score in the end. Uh, but if you don't want to see, uh, if you don't want the end ruined for you, and you'd like to see the rest of this playthrough, then go ahead and jump to the video linked in the description below, which is the extended playthrough, which will again also have the uh, end game scoring on it as well. So um, two ways to see the end. Okay, so end game scoring is pretty straightforward here. Let's talk about how we score my points here at the end of the game. You start with buildings. So this is five points and this is four points, but you're also gonna look at uh, any additional perks you get with the flags. So since I am highest on the cathedral track, I'm going to gain two additional. So we're at 11 total and here, I'm going to gain an additional one for this one worker. So we are at 12 total. Then we're gonna look at the level of cathedral. We are at the top level. So we are at, that's 20 additional. So that's 32. Uh, also we are as high as we can get on the virtue track. So that's seven more, 39. I don't have any unpaid debts. Uh, I don't have any excess marble or coins in the amount of 10 or more. You need 10 coins total. So unfortunately all this brick is useless uh, and I don't have any players in prison so just to refresh that was 9 10 11 12 32 37 is 39 yeah pretty straightforward for me so 
that's the benchmark the AI needs to get to. So let's count up his. His are pretty similar. I said, remember, he doesn't have any buildings. So let's look at his cathedral first. He's at 12. And over here, he's only at one. So he's at 13 total. Then we count up his marble, which is one VP per. So he is at 13 plus 10 um, is 23, 24, 25. So he's up to 25. He also gets one point per worker in the guild hall. So 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ooh, no. Things are getting tight. So we're up to 30. He luckily has one unpaid debt. So he's dropping back down to 28. And last but not least, does he have anybody in prison? He doesn't, which would have been an additional negative points. So actually it wasn't as close as um, I, I thought it was going to be. If you play on the opposite side, where you're this chick here, um, she actually gets three points per people, per person in the guild hall. So if you consider that I got one, two, three, four, five out of that, um, she would have gotten 10 more points. I still would have beaten her because she would have gotten 10 additional points from her guild hall workers. It was at 28 and that would have put her at 38. So I would have just squeaked by playing on difficult mode. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to play Architects of the West Kingdom solo. So keep an eye out. Uh, coming up next, we will be playing through Paladins of the West Kingdom and Viscounts of the West Kingdom all solo um and then in the end uh, we're going to compare them all so if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future please consider subscribing to the channel once again thanks for watching have a great day